Let's get Linus Torvald's thoughts on introducing Rust to the Linux kernel and programming with it in general. Here's a recent conversation that he had with Dirk, who is the head of the open source program office at Verizon. Let's get into what Linus thinks about Rust in the kernel. Uh, besides Linus not liking my joke, I want to apologize to the simultaneous translators because I have no idea how you would translate this into <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> Um, Good luck. So one of the things we've talked a lot about over the last few kernel releases is the introduction of Rust into the kernel. Mm -hmm. And I think it has been relatively steady and quiet. What's your perception? Well, so Rust still is at the point where we don't, we have the initial infrastructure got merged last year. The Linux kernel. It's been growing, but we don't have any part of the kernel that really depends on Rust mm -hmm. yet. To me, Rust was one of those things that A, it made technical sense, but to me personally, even more important was that we need to not stagnate as, as a kernel and as developers. And um, so I am always excited by trying something new and not getting too comfortable doing the same thing. I mean, I've been working on, on the kernel now for 32 years. Uh, yeah, 32 years. And that's a long time. It's a very long time. long time to work on one single thing, but it's still interesting because it's not the same single thing. I mean, Linux 32 years ago was very different from what Linux is today, obviously. And, and I actually often look for things where, where we can do new things and we can do things differently because it's so easy to get stuck in a rut and say, this is working just fine. And, and Rust has not really shown itself as the next great big thing, but I think during next year, we'll actually be starting to integrate drivers and some even major subsystems that are starting to actively use it. So it's one of those things. It's going to take years before it's a big part of the kernel, but it's, uh, it's certainly shaping up to be one of those. Which is refreshing to hear from Linus. I think Linus is approaching this very level-headedly because he realizes that anyone who stays behind in age and technologies is going to stay behind. This is crucial to the development of Linux and all open source programs. I like to hear this. So you're writing Rust code yourself. You're reviewing oh, no. Rust code. I have been reading Rust that code. That would be blasphemy. So that I can make some kind of judgment calls on, on when something is too horrendous to be included in the kernel. But I have to admit, no, I, um, I mean, the kernel... We rely on literally thousands of people. Yes. Every single release, we, we have a thousand people involved, and they're not the same thousand mm -hmm. people. Quite often, we have people, in fact, for the longest time, we've had the statistics be roughly that every release, about half the people involved send just one patch, and a lot of them never show up again. Mm -hmm. They may have something small they wanted to fix that they cared about, and they were not really kernel people. They found it for some other reason. Yeah. And they sent their small patch to the kernel, and they were never interested in doing anything more. But then the other half keeps coming back. And, and when it comes to Rust, I'm not going to be the one who manages the Rust code mm -hmm. because that's not my expertise, as is true of so many other parts of the kernel. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm less of a programmer these days than I am. I call myself a technical lead because I'm not, I'm not a manager. I don't manage people. I manage code. So I call myself a technical lead. I'm not, I'm not, my day-to-day -day work is not programming. It is uh, merging other people's codes and, and Rust will be one of those things. Yeah, so, so Jim in his keynote pointed out that open source developers sometimes are opinionated. Sometimes they express their opinion. So over the last two years, Rust has really started to become more and more of a language that can be used in lower level programming because of one of its most beneficial components, which is memory safe. And writing memory safe code really helps for several crucial reasons because you can write more reliable, secure, and efficient software with it. So Linus is actually is indicating a gradual but significant incorporation of Rust into the Linux kernel's ecosystem, which is quite fascinating. As you can tell, he mentions that it's not by any means ready to be actually accepted by the kernel, but it does have the initial infrastructure to get it merged into the kernel. And he seems to be optimistic about how it's going to be implemented into the kernel, noting that he sees sub-communities 
that are contributing to the kernel starting to use Rust in order to actually write code in many of the subsystems. It'll be an interesting year for Linux as Rust gets more and more adoption, but whether or not it's here to stay and be accepted is a question for how it fares over the next couple of years. And this is something important that Linus realizes. We're not going to have the same people around developing the kernel forever. We have to adapt with new technologies. And one of those new technologies is Rust to make it more efficient and easier to write code, especially for newer developers who aren't necessarily used to writing C code at such a low level. Rust can help to an extent bridge that gap. I was not aware of one single patch from half of the people. So if there's a thousand, that means 500 people are submitting one patch to help improve the kernel, whereas the rest are contributing more than one. And there's probably an even bigger breakdown, like only 10% of the overall contributors contribute 99% of the code, which is kind of unique to the open source community. Not many places where you get to contribute your own thoughts and ideas other than open source, because if you see something you don't like, or that is in your vision, incorrect or wrong, you can actually make a change. You can submit and advocate for your own code. And that's been the beauty of Linux over the years, over the last 30 years, is that you yourself can make a change into the kernel if you don't like something. So keep that in mind next time you see something that just bothers you. So overall, it seems like Linux is actually welcoming Rust and in general new technologies to the Linux kernel and the open source community, which is fantastic. This is what you would wanna see from a good leader. And he has been leading the development of Linux for the last 30 years. So it's refreshing to see somebody who seemingly has their ducks in a row. And I wish the community the best for the next 30 years as AI becomes more involved in everyone's experience of programming. If you wanna check out Linux's direct thoughts on AI and what it's going to do for open source programming, check out my video in the description below. What do you think about the adoption of Rust in Linux? Is it going to happen? Do you think it should happen? Either way, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.